Good morning. This is the Sunday after the, the annual meeting service and the following Sunday. This is Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to all of you out there, the children and the fathers. May you be blessed and may you make it a peaceful, loving day for all of you. Let's begin with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Quite often we start with a song. And we found there's one song that most people know. It's Kumbaya, which means, Come by here, my Lord. Kumbaya, my Lord, Kumbaya. Kumbaya, my Lord, Kumbaya. Kumbaya, my Lord, Kumbaya. Oh, Lord, Kumbaya. Someone say the Lord, Kumbaya. Someone say the Lord, Kumbaya. Someone say the Lord, Kumbaya, oh Lord, Kumbaya. I'd like to begin with a parable that was told to us by spiritual messengers of God on October 26, 1984. And we shall say unto thee this parable. Walk on a great mountain. The mountain had many valleys, and in the valleys lay very fertile land, and streams flowed from the mountains, and the streams became rivers. And in the fertile land, men came forth and settled. The first to come chose the land farther up, where it widened out, the valley widened out. He laid out his land <coughs> and began to farm it. He built diversion dams that the water might irrigate the land. As time went on, he took more and more from the streams and the rivers. Soon he had neighbors who had set up farms below him. This went on to down into great valleys. Now the day came when the people in the valleys he built huge cities. And since those who lived in the cities were in greater population, they said, let us pass laws that those at the head of the river cannot take the water from the river, that it shall be divided equally among the people. 
but those who were the first users of the water said, no, we were here first, the water is ours. First, laws tried to be passed. That did not work. Because it was the laws of the land. Soon, great arguments occurred. One day, a young man came by. As the farmers and the city people were arguing, and he listened to both sides carefully. And he asked, may I ask a question? At first, him being a stranger, they weren't inclined to answer him. But they decided out of respect that they must. And he said unto them, You were at the head of the river. What do you do with your crops? Your cattle? All the different type of crops that you grow? And he said, I take them to the city to be sold. He said, the young man said, then the bounty of the crop and the water that you use reaches the city. The city dwellers were very quick to try to, to deny this. When each farmer, each rancher, in turn, said the same. They looked about them and realized that what they said was true. that one needed the other, and therefore they would find ways that the man at the head of the stream would retain his water rights, and so on down to the cities. And they would find new ways of bringing new water into the land the land might grow and be plentiful. When they all work together and they built dams upon the river, soon they found that there was a bountiful amount for all. We say unto you, the parable we have told is like the love that comes from God. There is a boundable amount to feed each soul, and each soul shall take from it in their own way their needs. The soul is like a cup. If you fill it to the brim, it is full. If it is that which it needs, it needs no more. For there is room for other cups to be filled. Allow each person in their own way 
believe in their God as they wish. If this is done, then in truth, the light and the love and the rivers that carry the same shall flow forever. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together with love. Jesus said in Luke chapter 13, verse 25, Therefore he said to his disciples, I bid you put away anxious thoughts about food to keep you alive and clothes to cover your body. Life is more than food, the body more than clothes. Think of the ravens. They neither sow nor reap. They have no storehouse or barn. Yet God feeds them. You are worth far more than the birds. Is there a man among you who by anxious thought can add a foot to his height? If then you cannot do even a very little thing, why are you anxious about the rest? Think of the lilies. They neither spin nor weave. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all of his splendor was not attired like one of these. But if that is how God clothes the grass, which is growing in the field today, and tomorrow is thrown on the stove, how much more will he clothe you? How little faith you have. And so you are not to set your mind on food and drink. You are not to worry for all these things for the heathen to run after. But you have a father who knows that you need them. No, set your mind upon his kingdom and all the rest will come to you as well. Have no fear, little flock, for your father has chosen to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give in charity. Provide for yourself purses that do not wear out and never failing treasure in heaven. There no thief can get near it, no moth destroy it. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Today we have something for which we pray. When the last Sunday service ended, firemen and sheriffs came to the road on which our church to God sits beneath the former Christmas mine on the former, formerly called Christmas Star Route where angels led us to build a church. The church that was named simply to God, a church to God, where all faiths are welcome. Something happened. 
The desert has been in a drought for 18 years. Last summer, there were no monsoon rains at all, nor were there in the winter season. Rain did not fall. Not even enough to get the ground wet. So here it is, June, the hottest month of the year and the driest. And the grass is dead across the desert in a churchyard in the valley below and for hundreds and hundreds of miles. But it, but it, it is thought that a careless person started a fire in the National Forest nearby. And that fire has spread since June 4th to June 20th, split into two, was called the Mescala Fire. Then it became to the west toward the church, the Telegraph Fire. It burned on down Pinal Mountain, traveling three to five miles a day from that 22 mile trip. Uh, and the firefighters put a fire break to stop it across the street from the church on the other side of the hill. And there they have held off the fire for about a week now. The fire has continued to spread. It's, it was 177,000 acres yesterday and it spread to the west and followed the road where they made a fire break and then it went on up not just to the west of the church but southwest up the mountain toward the mine where the firemen are holding it off as best they can also, to the east of the church, across the highway, about three miles away, the fire burns on down that mountain toward where the highway and the road to the church meet. And that may also burn toward the church from the east. So the church to God stands, thanks to God, and thanks to the firemen. It hangs in the balance. It reminds me of a drought, a spiritual drought, where a valley, a church, people are in such great need of God and in a world, a country in a world that also hangs in the balance and is in such great need of God. Is the fire a sign to us that we have to have something in front of our faces before we, we can see? and turn to God and believe and ask for his help. Was the drought that led up to the fire, was it also a sign of spiritual thirst, the thirst of our land and the thirst of our nation, the thirst of our world, the need for God and the choices to choose God and not the other side? something to think about as we pray that God will save his little church to go in the valley on what used to be called Christmas Star Route. A church that was dedicated to God in 1982 when it was built on the first day of Advent, the day when people Remember John the Baptist and the prophecies 
and we prepare, prepare for the coming of the Messiah and the coming of Christmas when they celebrate Jesus' birth. But yet they prepare, prepare for his second coming. And it's just not what hangs in the balance today. Are we not asked to remember God and know him and have a place, prepare a place in our hearts for him that his spiritual messengers may enter to prepare a way for the coming of the Messiah in our hearts first and then upon the earth. It's a big question, a big fire, a big moment in time, perhaps. Maybe more than eyes can see or ears can hear. The church hangs in the balance. Does the world also hang in the balance? Here's a parable that we were given. What we can do with our prayers and our minds and our thoughts to hold back the disasters that are coming and that are at the very door. August 2nd, 1975, the spiritual messengers of God spoke to Ray's unconscious body, saying, Yes, we see thy need, and we should answer in this manner. As we have said before, the great sword stand poised above you. The sword shall cut two ways. It shall make the divisions within the land where no water was, water shall be. Where deserts lay, garden shall grow. But we say unto you, unto these words, Hurricanes and tornadoes shall plague the land. Prepare thyselves for such. But we say unto you, abundance and harvest has been placed at your doorstep. Bring these forth. Your desert and your mountains are but pastures for your feeding. Gather now, for soon shall be the lean years. Gather in abundance. The food has been provided as was provided for Moses and his people. We say unto you,
as the laws of the Lord were handed unto Moses. It should say unto you, Thy shall not kill. Prepare therefore in such a manner that I should covet not that that belongs to thy brother, but I should be able to give unto thy brothers, but stand firm. Give unto that that I may be able to give. But thy people must survive. <laughs> that the work must go on. We should provide that that is necessary. We shall tell unto thee of the parable. The parable was the time of preparation. For the prophet did come unto the land and say unto the people, Prepare now. Bring forth your storages of many forms of food, of medications, of tools, that these may be used in the time of need. The people did scoff upon him. Yet a few did listen, and they did repair their storehouses. The others went forth, wasting in a continued manner that was provided for their storage. In the fields and in the valleys grew abundance of food. They did not harvest it. And then came the times of drought, of famine. It struck upon the earth. The few that had gathered began to feed their people. Those that had not gathered at first were sorry that they had not prepared and then they became lustful and did prepare to cover that that belong to their brother. At first, their brothers gave that which they could, keeping that aside to feed their own. And they did dig wells, and they did build dams to catch the sparse water. And they did turn forth their seed 
to plant new land. Yet those who should not prepare stood idle and yet demanded food. And those who had prepared and were working said, if you should not work, you shall not eat. And so those who had not prepared plotted therefore to kill those who had. And they did come forth into the fields that were planted. And the fields were lush and ready for harvest. And they decided to burn the crop and therefore to burn the people. But the wind did shift and devour them. Now we say unto you, was it what you would call luck, or was it that the people who had prepared have prepared more than just food and provisions. They had prepared their minds in such a manner to control the element. If you should store, we have said, to store knowledge. This is the source of knowledge. For you should think our words are idle, and such could never be done. We should say unto you, such folly, for you who should hear our words and seek the wisdom, the knowledge shall be provided. We have brought forth in preparation for this time, and implanted the knowledge that is needed in Sore's mind for the teaching of the same. You soon shall start your college sessions. This is good, but yet not enough. We say unto you, could you prepare more teachers, more study sessions should be necessary. If a fire can consume, so it can protect. Build the fire with your mind in such a manner that as one tweet should stand, it can be broken easily. But if many stand together, 
they cannot be broken at all. I remember Jesus' words that we were just reading. Remember them? Have no fear, little flock, for your Father has chosen to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give them charity. Provide for yourself purses that do not wear out, and never failing treasure in heaven, where no thief can get it and no won't destroy it. But where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. They thought of the lilies in the field that do not spin, nor toil, but not even Solomon in all his glory, grandeur, was clothed as these. God will provide for our needs if we ask. When we renewed our vows, when the ministers renewed their vows last Saturday, a week ago, on June 12th, That was a promise, a covenant with God that He should be our God and we should be His people. And God will see to our needs. But the world thirst with a spiritual need and the world hungers and the fire burns closer and closer. Jesus said, be ready for action with belts fastened and lamps alight. Be like men who wait for their master's return from a wedding party, ready to let him in the moment he arrives and knocks. Happy are those servants whom the master finds on the alert when he comes. I tell you this, 
he will fasten his belt, seat them at table, and come and wait on them. Even if it is the middle of the night or before dawn when he comes, happy they if he finds them alert. And remember, if the household had known what time the burglar was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. Hold yourselves ready then, because the Son of Man will come at the time you least expect him. Peter said, Lord, do you intend this parable especially for us, or is it for everyone? The Lord said, Well, who is the trusted and sensible man whom his master will appoint as his steward to manage his servants and issue their rations at the proper time? Happy that servant who is found at his task when his master comes. I tell you this, he will be put in charge of all his master's property. But if that servant says to himself, the master is a long time coming, and begins to bully the men's servants and maids, and eat and drink and get drunk, then the master will arrive on a day that servant does not expect, at a time he does not know, and will cut him in pieces. Thus he will find his place among the faithless. The servant who knew his master's wishes, yet made no attempt to carry them out, will be flogged severely. But one who did not know them and earned a beating will be flogged less severely. Where a man has been given much, much will be expected of him. And the more a man has been trusted unto him, the more he will be required to repay. I have come to set fire to the earth and how I wish it were already kindled. I have a baptism to undergo, and what constraints I am under until the ordeal is over. Do you suppose I came to establish peace on earth? No, indeed, I have come to bring division. For from now on, five members of the family will be divided, three against two and two against three, father against son, son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother against son's wife and son's wife against her mother-in-law. He also said to the people, when you see the clouds banking up in the west, you should say it once. You say it once, it's going to rain. And rain it does. And when the wind is from the south, you say, there will be a heat wave, and there is. What hypocrites you are, you know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky. How is it you cannot interpret this faithful hour? And why can you not judge for yourselves what is the right course? When you are going with your opponent to court, make an effort to settle with him while you are still on the way. Otherwise, he may drag you before the judge and the judge hand you over to the constable and the constable put you in jail. I tell you, you will not come out till you have paid the last farthing. Jesus said, we know the signs. When we see the clouds banking, we know it will rain. When the wind comes from the south, we know it will be hot. The fire surrounds the church to God that was built and dedicated to prepare a way for the coming of the Messiah for people of all faiths and ways to come. All are welcome. Yet we have no rain. We have a high pressure system over the church and the boundaries of where the fire burns. And the fire grows a little closer to the church and the firemen are fighting very hard and we are praying. Let us remember the parable of the people who prayed and turn the fire with their minds. 
Let us protect our church to God. Let us believe in God and in his words. Let us have faith and know that the Messiah will return if we are prepared in our hearts to know him when he comes. Please, Father, we ask that you stretch out your hand and with our thoughts and prayers protect the church from the fire and from the heat. And in the same way, Lord God, that the drought has been 18 years and now the fire threatens your church, so also does a different fire from the enemy threaten our world and threaten the people in our world. So, Lord God, stretch out your hand as we join hands with one another. We have many faiths, ways, beliefs. As we join hands together, all of us who believe in the second coming or the coming of the Messiah, we, we join in prayer as one and ask, Lord God, that you protect your people and you protect your land and your church and your nation, one nation under God. And many nations and many peoples throughout the world. Let God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We pray, Lord God, that there not be 3,000 years of darkness, barbarian, and killing, and that the things that we read not come true, but that you, that your great plan, Lord God, that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We know it begins in each individual heart and mind. And so, I pray that many will choose you, God. Many will choose to follow you, will choose your way, and will pray. For they are the armies of the Messiah today, who battle the armies of the Antichrist. Many people look and see what's going on in the world and they understand or they're beginning to understand others do not and it is as it was in the parables and what Jesus said some will believe and some will not but Lord God may all those who believe in you join hands protect your church Protect your people, protect your nation, protect other nations, protect our world, Lord God. Let us see a thousand years of peace as God counts upon the earth, and each year shall be as a thousand years each day. Let us see the coming of the Messiah, and may we walk with him when he comes, and may there be a new heaven and a new earth as God has promised in his great plan. In God's name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
As we pray for a church to God, may it be in God's hands, and may it all, the future of the world, the future of church, the future of the preparation for the coming of the Messiah, may it all be in God's hands, and may we join together in singing. <clears throat> He's got the whole world in his hand 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 for the wine shall be our body soul spirit and immortal body And the bread shall be the gift of life that comes from God to bear into man, that all may be whole. I see the Lord has once again timed it perfectly, for we end at the very minute that he comes, his spiritual messengers come and share in the bread and wine with us. And glory be to you, O Lord, and glory be to your children forever and ever. Thank you for protecting our church, your flock, your people. Thank you for reaching to all those throughout the world. As as we pray, as the people turn the fire in the other direction with their minds in prayer, so also may we turn the fire away from us and back to those who have created it, who send it to destroy our world. Let it not destroy our world, let it turn on them. Lord God, not my will, but may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Please, God, we pray for the coming of the Messiah and to prepare a way for his coming within our hearts and minds. We pray to bind together and stand as strong twigs that cannot be broken. We pray, Lord God, For the preparation and for the coming of the Messiah. May thy will be done on earth as in heaven. May thy kingdom come. May all glory and honor be yours forever and ever. Amen.